Hi everyone, welcome to Bible Journaling with Leanne. It's lovely that you've joined me today. Today I'm going to be um, working with masking fluid and as that takes a few hours to dry before you can create, I thought I'd dive straight in with that bit. If you want to create this page and you don't have masking fluid in the house at the moment, you can create a mask using some paper and some blue tack or something else that will stick the paper down temporarily into your Bible and be able to create a really similar technique. I love using this masking fluid with its fine nozzle because I can just draw with it really. I'm having a few problems with bubbles but I managed to burst most of them in the end. I just gradually I'm drawing out the shape of a nail. It's going to be a, a rusty, withered, horrible nail as we look at this part of John's Gospel where he talks about the death of Jesus and the way he surrendered himself. So there's one rusty nail drawn in masking fluid ready to dry out over the next couple of hours. Fortunately you don't have to go through the ordeal of waiting for that to dry and if you're using a piece of paper and some blue tack or something similar to create your mask it'll be a much quicker process. You can just go straight on and create as soon as you've, as you've cut out and got it ready. You might notice under the right hand side I've got a notebook um, of my daughter's just tucked under there just to raise the Bible pages up just so my Bible lays that bit flatter. It really helps when you're working in the very front or the very back of your Bible because otherwise you get that real slope where your Bible friends to close especially once it's as full as mine. So I just like to prop it up with a notebook or some pieces of paper or whatever I find lying around. I'm just going through and bursting those bubbles. That's enough. That can dry now and be ready for later. So moving forward, today we're going to need a few different resources. Um, we're going to be working in watercolours. Oh, this is me coming back after everything's dried. So we're going to need our watercolours. We're also going to use um, some paintbrushes and pieces of plastic. Any cellophane that you can find lying around, any packaging, doesn't need to be brand new. You need two pots of water, one clean and one for dirty. So today we're going to use these um, resources to do some watercolour smooshing. It's a technique I love. I use it a lot to create different backgrounds with. Um, and today I'm going to use it to look like um, like rays, like bursts of power really. It starts off looking a bit gory because I start off with red. And all I'm doing is just picking up the colour onto my paintbrush. I want the colour to be quite concentrated and dark because I don't want to create lots of layers. I just put a bit onto the plastic, turn the plastic over and smoosh it out. There you go. Now you can either try and stay in control and just do a little bit at a time like I have here or you can go for it and just put loads of paint on and see what happens. I want the paint to look like it's coming out from the nail and you saw there I added some directly to the page and then just spread it out just to um, give a bit more depth of colour. So all I'm, oh, I forgot to put the piece of paper behind my Bible page. If you are working in your Bible uh, with wet supplies you always want to just tuck a piece of scrap paper behind that page just so um, you don't get those um, nasty bits of paint coming through onto other pages. I make loads of mistakes on this page. I keep getting paint on the other page and having to um, dilute it and spread it out. But I'm sure I can cover that up another day. Now going in with some orange. I want it to almost look like the power of flames. In my head as I was thinking about this image, was this was the moment of surrender where Jesus gave up his life so that he could live, so that he would die, so that we could live. He was being obedient to Father God, doing what he'd sent him to do. And this moment of surrender, this was the moment where he unlocked the power of God so that Holy Spirit could come. If 
Jesus didn't do this, if Jesus didn't give up his power on that cross, we wouldn't have Holy Spirit with us today. And the Christians who have come before us, who have the Holy Spirit with them, wouldn't have it with them either. And so I just wanted to create that image of the fire of the Holy Spirit coming from the nail. Because in that moment when Jesus surrendered and decided to do things according to God's plan, that's when we were given the greatest gift of all too, because we can live our lives empowered by Holy Spirit, not on our own, not struggling, but empowered by him. And so we're, we're just in John's Gospel, and I just want to read these couple of verses from chapter 19, verse 28 to 30. After this, Jesus, knowing that it was all... Sorry, I'll start again. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I first. A jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it out to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. I think that bowing of his head is just a symbol of that surrender. I feel like he bowed his head to God and as I, I prayed and had this image placed on my heart of this nail surrounded by the power of the Holy Spirit, I just felt that power came from Jesus' surrender. Before he'd been praying in the garden that God would take this cup of suffering from him but not his will, but God's will be done. He was happy to surrender, willing to surrender. It caused him great pain and distress. And that's why I wanted to make this nail look as gnarled and ugly as I could. I wanted to have that kind of rusty finish and then make it look rough and, and knobbly and and painful because there was anything there wasn't anything about this that wasn't painful it was a terrible ordeal that Jesus went through and yet at the same time as Jesus gave up his spirit his power the power that comes from the holy spirit went forth around the world in a way that it had been contained before the temple curtain split in two from top to bottom and his power went forth around the world and that's why I wanted to just go around these paint splotches and give them a bit more of a dynamic look make them look like they are moving and they're coming to life because it's the power that went out from that moment of surrender I wanted to capture that movement. Jesus said this, this it is finished. And his work was finished. But something more was beginning too. Something that wasn't going to stop, that was going to carry on flowing around the world. The Holy Spirit was on the move. The Holy Spirit was fulfilling all that God intended since the beginning of time so that he could be reunited with us. There would be no more barriers between us and God. We could just be with him. So I just go round with the finest micron pen and I'm just creating lots and lots of loops and circles some in some places outlining the splodges and some places um just creating um splodges that i think should be there just trying to make the page look like it's moving and coming alive as much as possible and then i started thinking about my wording i struggled because i really wanted to use stickers <laughs> most of my letter stickers are running out um I wanted to create this title, The Power of Surrender. 
I wanted the, the words to um, pop off the page, but equally that power would be the dominant word, not surrender. Because surrender is the act of submission. So it's almost like the word surrender is submitting to the power above it. And so the power dominates it. And the surrender lies underneath. Because it takes a great power to make us surrender. To submit to God's way. We see all through the Bible as people trying to follow God. Desperately want to submit to his way. And yet struggle so much. When it actually comes to it to do what he's called them to do. And in this passage we have that perfect image of somebody who's able to surrender to God's will. Because Jesus surrendered fully to the Father. And it helps us and inspires us to know that because Jesus was fully man, fully human, that we can do that too. We can surrender to Father's will in our lives. So I just want to leave this here, but just pray that you would know the power of God's surrender in your life. Pray that Holy Spirit would come and meet with you. Meet with you as you reflect on all that Jesus has done for you. Both as you read this passage in John's Gospel, where Jesus is crucified, but also right here and now in your life. And in your past. Pray that Holy Spirit would be moving you, shaping you, drawing you closer to him. In Jesus' name. Amen.